The combiner tab is where you're going to be doing a lot of blending. Most of the time you're going to be using this combiner node right here. And this is how you just blend data together. So if I have this advanced Perlin and another height field like this radial gradient, I can plug into here and there. So now that Perlin and the radial gradient are going to blend together by this combiner. And if we double click, we get some simple options. We have a method, which is averaging. These are simple uh, blend modes, kind of sort of similar to Photoshop. You have add, subtract, multiply, max, min, power, root, detail, differences, and screen blend modes. And you can specify the strength. So right now we're just averaging these two terrains based off my strength. So if I go to 50%, these terrains are blending together at 50%. Um, if I go to max, it's going to return the highest altitude between the two terrains. So you can see that most of the terrain is purlin, but this portion, oops, this portion of the radial gradient is higher than the purlin, so that's what's going to come back. We could do the inverse. We could return the minimum value. <laughs> that's pretty cool. So most of the radio gradient was below the advanced Perlin terrain. And we can subtract advanced Perlin from radio gradient. And that's what we get. We can flip these, see what happens. Yep. Sometimes I get confused as to which box is actually uh, how each box affects each other. So an easy way to remember is that the bottom box is the one that's going to affect the top box. So whatever input I have here at the bottom will affect the top. So if I have my advanced Perlin and I just want to add a big giant hill at the top of the center, I would plug my radio gradient into the bottom slot. Advanced Perlin would go on the top and I would change this to add. And now my radio gradient is now adding to that terrain. Now on the bottom of most nodes, you're going to see this little purple box. That's a mask input. What we're doing here is we're just adding this diamond radial gradient to the advanced Perlin on a just an unmasked global approach. If I wanted to mask where that gradient is applied, I would plug a height field or a color into that slot. And I'll show you. So if I just grab, say, this gradient here, and we will. Just offset it right in the middle. And there we go. Well, have this kind of like linear, linear gradient right in the middle. So if I go and I plug that gradient into the mask, <laughs> this gradient will now mask out the contribution of the radio gradient. I can turn that, huh, create all kinds of weird effects. Now this is super useful when you want to blend based on height. So just very quickly, I'll show you how to do that. You can see what the effect is going to be. So with this node, we'll just select the height at which we blend. We can set the fall off. Yep. So combiner is really powerful. You're going to use it a lot. Also in the combiner tab, you have height chooser. This is a pretty cool node in that it will take a guide input and then blend several different values up to 16 together based on the height of that guide input. 
So a little confusing. I'll show you how it goes. So I have uh, events Perlin here. I'll add this Voronoi. I'll just scale it down. This is not going to be a beautiful example. It will show you a functional example. And we'll just, actually I'll make this a square and bring it down. Okay, so I have three noises or three generators and then I'm going to blend them using, we'll just use this gradient just for an example. So here's my guide input is the first input. Then I have three other inputs to use. I'll plug my Perl in. That'll be the lowest value. The Voronoi will be the middle value. And then the highest value will be the radial gradient. So the low value of this gradient, it's gonna pick the advanced Perlin. So you can see on this portion here, I'll make this bigger. You can see on this portion of the height field where the gradient is lowest, it uses the Perlin. Then as you get a little bit higher, it switches and blends to the Voronoi. Then as it gets a little higher than that, it's gonna use the radial gradient. Now, our radial gradient isn't matched up with the location of the high points, so all we'll have to do is just move that over. There we go. So you can kind of see how that's working. That's really cool for getting terrains with different effects, getting some mountains that are jutting out of areas on the height field. So if we go, let's say, we like this, and we'll just do two inputs. So now you can see that we have the Perlin, it's blending to the Voronoi based on the height of this gradient. We can manipulate that gradient just like anything else can. Change the contrast, or the width rather, direction. Inside the height chooser, you can adjust the contrast of the transition, essentially adjusting the contrast of the gradient. And if you're using like a different kind of uh, generator, like uh, another Perlin, you can crank up the contrast so they blend a lot harsher or softer.